Welcome back to Rise Africa. The current face-off between Kogi State Governor in Nigeria, Yahya Bello, and the Deputy Governor, Simon Chuba, uh, which has degenerated with the suspension of the Deputy Governor by the State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has heightened fear over the likely fortunes of the ruling party in the November 16 governorship election. Now, observers say the suspension and the commencement of the impeachment notice on the embattled deputy governor stand as concrete evidence that barely two months before the election. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Zainab Yusuf Ogundano, national coordinator, Buhari Continuity Movement. She's also national coordinator at Shiwajibola Hakmet Tenovu Abbott. Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. You are also an indigenous of Kogi State. So yes. let me begin by asking you, what really is the crux of the matter between the governor and his deputy? I think is um, if you ask my personal opinion, is an um, ideology problem. Mm. In the sense that um, the governor nominated him in 2015 when he decamped to APC, you know he was a, a PDP member, and um, he had different ideology, okay, coming from PDP. But we thought that um, joining APC would make him change and um, go by the rules or the ideals of APC. But unfortunately, he didn't. And you're just realizing that now. Because some people will say, you know, perhaps the APC is just not used to hearing the truth. I mean, the allegations by the deputy governor is that the governor has refused to pay salaries, the governor has not performed, and even he himself, as a deputy governor, is being owed salaries of about two years. Well, but it's, he has been proven wrong. The um, spokesperson for Kogi State Government came out with proofs showing that he's been paid up to July this year. Okay, and that um, some allowances are being owed him, and he's not just the only one. Several other appointees are yet to be paid, and it's not that the governor doesn't want to pay him, but because of um, lack of funds, enough funds for that, you know, it's not just salary alone that the governor would have to do as, as the governor of the state. There are other projects that he needs to look into. Okay, with all of these, you know, uh, problems and issues concerning Yahya Bello, let's look, even look at, you know, the um, uh, November 16 election that is coming up. Do you think that he's um, a viable candidate for a second term, considering all of these things that have been mentioned, you know, about him? He's extremely viable, very, very viable. Okay, and you say that based on? Based on the things he's been able to do, okay, infrastructure-wise. Uh, we've seen him constructing roads all around Kogi, um, Kogi East, Kogi um, West, and even Kogi Central. Then they recently built um, Omi Rice uh, Mill, one of the biggest in Nigeria today. And several other projects is embarking on. And not just that, he's um, um, a, a person that has come to unite the states, okay, in the sense that um, he came with just one notion that um, no. Um, no tri um, tribalism, or he's, he's detribalized in the sense that um, before he became the governor, the Igalas would say, I'm Igala, the Ebiras, the Okuns. But he came and said, no, if you're a Kogite, you are a Kogite. We are one. And he's done so much on that. So you see him each time he goes to Kogi East. He's at home. The Ata Igala, that's the paramount ruler of the Kogi East, is like a father to him. And... He goes to the west, he's also at home. He comes to the part central where he's from, he's, all, he's at home as well. So are you saying that an average Kogi citizen, resident, would say, would beat their chest to say Governor Yahya Bello has performed in the last three and a half years? It may not be all, but majority will. Sincerely, those who are sincere, who wants to actually say the truth, will say he has performed. Looking at performance holistically, not just one section. And what do you mean by holistically, uh, performance holistically? Exactly. That's what? all aspects of governance 
infrastructure. For a state that has been owed salaries, a civil servant state? Kogi State is not the only state being owed salaries. And we understand that... Um, Despite the bailout funds that was given to the state. And that's one of the allegations by the deputy governor who says... The, the bailout funds were not used for what they were supposed to be used for. That's not true. Bailout fund was given about a month ago, and he has paid salaries. The third tranche. That was, a, that, was a, that was the third tranche. He's been governor for over three and a half years now, and so he's been paying. As, as the money comes in tranches, he pays. Well... Okay, you know and what? The I, recent I, one that was given to him, he okay. has also paid salaries. Okay, I want to get your take, you know, on the deputy, you know, Simon Achuba himself, because every time my colleague says one or two things, you know, you seem to discredit whatever has been said. So let me get your take on what you think he's done as a deputy uh, 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 governor and what you just think about him generally, so that it can help us put things into perspective how you view both both of them. I'm seriously disappointed in his. Um, in his attitude, the way he has gone about the whole thing. When he joined APC, on realizing that he's not able to cope with um, the ideologies of, of the party, he ought to have resigned honorably. Okay? Why condemn your principal after three and a half years? Like she asked, how come you're just knowing that? Mm -hmm. That question should be thrown to him. Why is he just coming out to say all this now? Why didn't he say it in the first year? Let's assume that he didn't know him after 12 months. 24 months is still not enough for him to say, no, I want to honorably resign because I'm not in tune with what you're doing. The, uh, the truth of the matter is you can't just, um, you can't work with a disloyal person. As close as that, you know, the deputy governor is supposed to be very close to the governor. So if you're disloyal, how will, will we be able to work together? And... Um, I believe what is happening between them, them right side is purely political. Well, I, I, I believe he's being used. And that's why the APC in Kogi State has suspended him. Okay, he should have resigned honorably. You know, he was a um, deputy speaker uh, between 2013 and 2017, and he was also impeached. So there's character flaws somewhere. There's something that is just not right. Okay. He can't just come and say he... There are evidences that he signed for his salary, and it's been, he has not come out to dispute that. Well, the instrument of state and that of the party are firing from all sides of the cylinders. Um, he's been suspended. There are impeachment plans on, on the way. Uh, so clearly, uh, I was going to ask you, do you think there's any political solution to this? What is likely to play out at the end? Okay. And how will this impact your party in the forthcoming elections? This is a governor and his deputy falling apart uh, months to the election. It will have no effects on the election. That's one. Definitely he will be impeached. I see it coming because there's just no way. He has, got, he has said so much against the party. Okay? And it's is that his crime, that's... that he is from PDP, that he, he came from PDP to the APC, and that he's speaking now three years after, even though it might be the truth, mm -hmm. and that he has spoken ill about his uh, boss, the no, governor? It, is that the proven... crime? No, that's not just the crime. It's been proven that he, he's not speaking the truth because he said he's being owed salaries, and it's been proven that he's not being owed, okay? And um, he's just not... It's, it's political. We, we believe he's being used by the other parties against APC at this dying moment. Why now? Why now? Why now when election is just a few months away? Why now? So you think he should have done so, you know, I, I, like you were saying earlier, like a year earlier, you would have believed him then as opposed to now? No, if think... he's sincere, if mm -hmm. he's sincere, if it's true what he's saying, he ought to have done that after 12 months. Just a year is enough for him to decide, to know if this government is working or not. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, a, a year is too much even for me to decide as a person mm -hmm. if I'll be able to work with you or not. Six so months is just enough. So you think he's a pawn that is being used in, in the hands of... Um, um, it, Other it, parties. Yes. Yes, okay. I believe so. But beyond uh, this uh, face-off between the governor and his deputy, there are also other dissenting voices in Kogi State within the APC for instance, those who say the mode of primaries to be, to be uh, adopted for these uh, primaries, uh, they are saying, in fact, some have gone to court. Uh, and you still say that the APC has what it takes 
to come out in the next election victorious. Yes, very positive about that. The faction that have gone to court is just a minute faction. Of, you, even that faction, it's divided already. Okay, some of them want indirect and some want direct. Okay, all right. So um, let's move away a little bit from uh, uh, politics now and focus more on you. Uh, one of the things that you know we said about you is that you're national coordinator of Buhari Continuity Movement. You're also national coordinator of the Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, Foundation. You know, is there any point in time where there's ever some kind of conflict of interest between what you are, you know, with Buhari and what you are with the um, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu Foundation? No, not at all. Okay, it doesn't create any kind of conflict, no, none whatsoever. No, no, not, not, not any, because um, where continuity movement uh, is is completely different. It came up when we we're preparing for the elections, and um, using that umbrella, we were able to campaign, and um, we did a lot of things for the election that we had, the last election that brought in this present president, President Mahmoud Buhari. Mm -hmm. Now, the Abbas Foundation is a foundation founded by a group of people that have seen Bola Ahmed Tinubu as um, an, an enigma, a great leader, a leader that has raised several leaders. Okay, and we feel this man shouldn't just go by without people studying him and, um, and becoming like him. Okay, and so we came together and started on the study in him. We read books about him, follow his events and all that, train people in that state, okay, hoping to fill his shoes. Well, interesting because uh, some with the insinuations uh, going around town, some will wonder uh, if this is a platform for those insinuations that, that uh, Bola Hamid Tinubu might just be gone in for the 2023 presidential election. Uh, is the Abbott Foundation doing that? No, not really. Not uh, really? Yes. So you are, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Um, Bola Metinubu has not uh, shown interest that he wants to be the president come 2023. But if he does, we'll be mm -hmm. available to work for him. Is the foundation persuading him to, to get involved? No, we are just studying him at the moment. Okay. All right, then. Uh, Zainab Yusuf Ogundano, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Thank you for having me again. Great to have you.